I have said before at these lunches that in some ways this is my very favorite uh, lunch. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, for us to get together with people who have been with us for a little while. Uh, and the American Law Institute is a place that, uh, as I say often, uh, 25 years at anything is early adolescence in ALI years. Uh, so. Let me, uh, let me first start with one little bit of a housekeeping uh, issue. Uh, as everybody probably knows, Justice Ginsburg is going to join us right at 2 o'clock, and so uh, we will try to be out of here at about 1.30 or uh, no later than a quarter of 2, so we can all get into our seats and, and uh, be prepared for, uh, for her to help us uh, make a very important award. What happens when you become a life member of the American Law Institute uh, is that uh, two things are important. Uh, one is we revere and appreciate you. I should say three. Uh, secondly, we don't expect you to go anywhere. We deeply need uh, your work in every way. But it is true that uh, we have a fixed number of members, 3,000, who are not life members. And so uh, for each of you, we have not an opening for someone to take your place because we need all of you. <laughs> but we do have somebody for you to look to to mentor. And, and this brilliant idea, uh, the the founders had of uh, moving people along so that we could continually refresh the number of people in the Institute with additional ideas and uh, with people from all over the country is very much helped along. And so this is uh, not a graduation at all, but it is a commencement. That is a uh, commencement of your being elevated in our mind uh, to even more important people than you were before you came to lunch. How often does that happen? Uh, let me acknowledge, first of all, uh, on behalf of all of the 50-year-old, 50-year uh, members attending, uh, we normally invite one person from the class to accept a medallion on behalf of the rest of the class. Uh, this year, we have prevailed upon Rod Perkins to do that, and I'll ask Rod to stand up and come up in a second. But I want to say first, uh, just like the other members of his class who are very busy today, Rod, uh, happily because of his great allegiance to the American Law Institute, made time in his schedule to come here today. Let me tell you, in case uh, some of you may not remember, uh, Rod uh, has the Olympic record for sitting in the chair of leadership in the American Law Institute. He was the president for 13 years and the chair for 15 years. That makes our current term limit for a president of nine years look like amateur night, Rod, and uh, I, I am so appreciative of that. Uh, Rod, as I think everybody probably knows, is one of the most distinguished lawyers in the country. He graduated with honors from Harvard, both as an undergraduate and as, um, and as, a, uh, as a law student. He was the president during uh, a, an event uh, involving uh, corporate governance that made our discussion yesterday look like a walk in the park. Uh, and he made it look like a walk in the park because of his able leadership. His birthday is tomorrow. Uh, and so I want us to all in a moment sing happy birthday to him. And I won't tell you his age, but I will tell you that he was three when the American Law Institute was founded. <laughs> he was invited to join when he was seven. <laughs> so, Rod, first let us uh, sing happy birthday to you. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, darling Rod. Happy birthday to you. And now if you would come up, Rod. 
please come up so that I can give you, uh, on behalf of the Institute and on behalf of your fellows, This is uh, the 50-year medal, and we'll send it to you. Uh, and we thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Now, uh, eat away, please. Um, let me ask all of the life members of the class of 1989 to rise. Everybody who has a red rose, or if we missed you somehow, if you're in this class, we welcome you, we esteem you, we appreciate you, and we congratulate you. Thank you very, very much. Now, a few years ago, uh, the member of uh, one of the classes had a brilliant idea. And that was Susan Appleton. And she called me one day. Now, she often called me to say, surely you didn't mean to do this. <laughs> uh, usually I did mean to do it, but by the time she was done with me, I didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, and she said, you know, why don't we have a class gift? And I had no idea why. And so we tried uh, once. And it worked wonderfully, and people were thrilled. And I think this is our third year uh, of there being a class gift. So the first thing that we do uh, is we invite uh, some members of the class to share this. And I'm going to call on one in just a moment, someone quite uh, uh, dear to me. Uh, people from New Mexico are dear to me. And I, I should uh, say, by the way, that uh, sitting at my table is one of my favorite New Mexicans, and that's Janet Napolitano, <laughs> who is a member of your class. People have noted that I can't seem to have a meal here without a New Mexico person sitting uh, at least at my table. The part you don't see is where they hand me the green chili under the table. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, this year, we had three members that were wonderful in agreeing to be the chairs of this year's class gift committee. And they are Kate Bartlett, who could not be here today because uh, she is in the process of uh, getting a new grandchild sometime during the day today, we understand, <laughs> uh, time uh, unknown. Uh, Vance Opperman, who had, unfortunately, a sudden uh, business issue, and happily, Peter Winograd. Peter Winograd is known to everybody in legal education, He's known pretty much to everyone in medical education as well because he helps uh, review medical schools. He has friends uh, from one coast to the next, but we're honored to have him call the University of New Mexico Law School his home. Peter, please. Thank you, Roberta. It's a pleasure to be here today to report on the results of the Class of 1989 gift campaign that I and my co-conspirators, Kate and Vance, uh, have been working on over the past few months. But first, I should tell you that when Roberta called last fall and asked me to serve as one of three co-chairs, it was with uh, some, co uh, some uh, considerable trep trepidation that I accepted. Although I have been responsible for most aspects of law school management during my career, fundraising, or as it's called today, advancement, <laughs> has never been one of my responsibilities, thank goodness. And on rare occasions, when I've been asked to solicit contributions, uh, this has usually involved taking a prospect for a good lunch or dinner at one of the better restaurants in town, are preceded by a couple of drinks and followed by the ask, usually over a high-calorie dessert. Since, all member, uh, since ALI members are scattered all over the country, a fine dining was not an option uh, as a prelude to seeking even large gifts from prospects with greatest, the greatest potential for supporting the cause. 
Uh, this effort was to be conducted entirely by phone and email. It was to be fundraising plain and simple, without frills, no frequent flyer miles to spur donations, no hotel bonus points, no drawings to win a trip. The only time I had done anything even vaguely like this was decades ago when I spent a summer earning money for college selling Life magazine subscriptions over the telephone. <laughs> this was at a special professional rate of eight cents a copy, $12 for three years, with, no ris- with a no-risk money-back guarantee to barbers one week, auto mechanics the next, and believe it or not, morticians the week after that. Uh, The ALI campaign was going to involve a very different crowd with very different conversations. In any event, Kate, Vance, and I uh, began making our calls, sending emails, and generally tracking down members of the class of 1989. And I can honestly say that collectively, your responses made this an extraordinarily pleasant experience. We already knew some class members, so in those situations, this was an opportunity to catch catch up with folks uh, we had not connected with for a while. And in other cases, we reached out to individuals we had not met before, several of whom are here today, enabling us to match faces with names. And most important, in both situations, almost everyone listened to the presentation weighed what we thought were compelling reasons for supporting this campaign, and then made a contribution or a pledge. So it's now time to report where we stand today, with six weeks yet to go before the June 30th deadline. As Roberta said, this was the uh, Institute's third class gift campaign, and we have set two records. First... Although our class was the smallest of the three, with only 94 members versus 120 and 129 in the prior ones, we had the highest goal of $150,000, and we have exceeded that, raising a total that today stands at $182,575. Second, with regard to the participation rate, the prior two classes had participation rates of 43 and 57 percent. I'm really ecstatic, and it's rare that I use that word, uh, to report that 75 of our 94 members have contributed so far, giving us a remarkable 80 percent participation rate. I cannot think of another nonprofit association, or any organization for that matter, that has come close to achieving such a percentage. The generosity demonstrated by each and every donor helped make this possible. It is indicative of the high esteem in which the ALI is held by its members and the respect they have for its work, particularly the Institute's law reform projects and the relatively new Young Scholars Medal and Symposium. Our class gift will help support these cutting-edge programs and will also assist the Institute in covering travel expenses for members in government or other public service positions who might otherwise be unable to participate in ALI projects. And finally, it must be said that these results could not have been possible without the truly incredible staff support that we received from the folks in Philadelphia, with particular recognition to Beth Goldstein and Kyle Jacob, who were simply outstanding in every way. Uh, Kyle was our main contact, and I quickly lost track of the amount of time he and I spent communicating with each other, but it was huge, not only during regular business hours, but often outside of them. So special thanks to Kyle and everyone who helped make this campaign a success. We appreciate all of you, and thank you very much.
this is really extraordinary. And I, I, I wanted to say uh, that Peter uh, and Kate and Vance have gone above and beyond. And I, my heart goes out to that 10% of your class that has not yet contributed. <laughs> There are six weeks left. Because I promise you, you will hear from Peter. But, but what I really wanted to say for everybody is that um, a few years ago, uh, Janet DiPolitano, I think this was at the same meeting, came and excoriated us uh, as our dinner speaker for not involving lawyers who were involved in the public sector in the ALI. And at that same meeting, I think uh, Janet at night and then Helene Barnett, then the chair, uh, the president of the National Legal Services Corporation at lunch, uh, said, you know, you have no legal aid lawyers. I'm, I'm one of the few that is here. And as we looked into it, uh, one of the things we realized is that it was expensive to participate. The dues are not much. But actually coming to our meetings and uh, being an advisor and coming to the annual meeting is expensive. And it didn't seem to me that it was right for us to invite people and not allow full participation. The money that you have raised is so significant, Peter, and I hope you express to Kate and to Vance for me my deep appreciation because it helps us change the very fabric of what we're doing to make sure that we really are the American Law Institute, which is a meritocracy and in which we allow everybody to participate, understanding that lunches and dinners are just as important to our work as sitting in the meetings and participating. So I thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you, you, Peter. <laughs> so now, uh, as they say, chat among yourselves. And uh, I'll interrupt you in a few minutes, and, and we will hear our speaker from your class. Thank you. <laughs>